Xbox looks to be bowing out graciously out of the console wars, but Xbox fanboys are having a hard time dealing with it. But honestly, they shouldn't. Join us for today's video. Xbox fanboys need to face it. The platform wars are over. This is the medicine. Let's get into this one. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks. Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, you name it, we are there. And we're back again with another episode of The Medicine. This is where we talk about the latest and greatest in the video gaming news on the AAA genre defining scene, what's taking over the talks in the gaming community. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have a doozy for you. This one is a little bit of a rant. I have no notes on this. This is strictly off the cuff. But I felt like this is something that we had to cover. And again, this is Xbox fanboys. Need to face it. The platform wars are over. All right. But before we get into this one, please do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when we are dropping these doses. All right. Let's get into this one. So Xbox fanboys are on Twitter and they're, they are very upset, okay? And wh who am I talking about the fanboys here? I'm not talking about the Xbox gamers or even the Xbox enthusiasts, right? Like for prime example, I'm a cloud gamer. I love cloud gaming. Um, it should be no secret if you follow my content that NVIDIA GeForce Now at the time of this recording is my favorite platform, not just to game on for cloud gaming, but to game on in general, right? I got an infinity for that platform. Check it out. It, 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 it's it's a great platform to use i'm like for instance i was playing banishers the other day um at 4k 120 with everything turned up right um so i can relate to the cloud gamer uh who looks at what xbox is doing with x cloud and whatever and they say you know what them abandoning the box them going multiplat it's not a big deal i even look at the gamer who is a Game Pass game, right? Who games primarily on Game Pass that, you know, don't buy the multi-plats, just wait for the games to hit the Game Pass system. And they should be fine. I, I can relate to them. You know what I mean? Um, those guys are fine. I'm not, when I say fanboys, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about those that are upset because they don't have anything to argue about on Twitter anymore in regards to the console wars. And when I say that, I'm not even talking about the gamer who bought an Xbox, right? Maybe he had a tough decision to make. Maybe they're not a Game Pass gamer because everybody on Xbox doesn't have Game Pass. They're not a Game Pass gamer. They buy their games a la carte. Subscription service doesn't speak to them. And they bought the box and they felt like they had to make a difficult decision and they, they just settled with xbox for whatever reasons but one of the main reasons being that they probably prefer the xbox games only to find out that the xbox games are now going to one of the other systems that they may have was on the fence about buying instead so they're probably thinking, damn, I could have just saved my money, still experienced those great Xbox games because now they're going to be going elsewhere and could have bought a Nintendo Switch or PlayStation 5 and experienced everything. I'm not even talking about you. You're not a fanboy in that scenario. You're not a fanboy unless you rest your laurels on being able to go to Twitter and argue. And that's the only reason why you don't like what Xbox is doing. Someone like myself, I've been critical of Xbox for the past several years, particularly Phil Spencer. I don't like the direction that he's taken Xbox in opposed to where they were at as far as their delivery of games and the type of games that they curated. But it's their brand. They can do whatever they want. Like, I, I can't stop them. The only thing that I can try to influence is at least be transparent with your gamers. For those gamers that, again, bought the box, had a tough decision to make, probably would have been better served to buy something else or now they're better served to buy something else knowing that the stuff is going to hit elsewhere you know what i mean um 
that's the only thing I can influence, but it's their brand. They do whatever they want with it. And that's why as a consumer, you don't do what a lot of these fanboys are doing. A lot of these fanboys, they want you to be invested in what Xbox does no matter what, because Xbox talks about a promise of this and a promise of that. Where in my opinion, those promises were just to keep you at bay. Those of you that would volatile could potentially leave because the brand is moving in a direction that isn't best suited for you to keep you in place until they can find a financial substitute for you leaving. Let me give you a prime example. When Nintendo bowed out of this space as well, they did so with the, the GameCube. They just did a clean break. They said, look, we can no longer battle in this space. PlayStation owns this. We're going to do something different. They were able to do so and pivot like that and make a clean break because they had the handheld business that was still thriving, right? So they could rest on those laurels and move somewhere else. The Xbox business, even though they've been planting everything everywhere, and again, this is not me being mean, this is just me looking at the business evaluation, looking at the success and the saturation or the lack thereof. Even though they've thrown everything but the kitchen sink everywhere, they are not making fast enough inroads in all the places where they're at. They're not, they're, they're, they'll see significant bumps here and there on PC, but they're not killing it on PC. They're not killing it with their own store. They're not killing it with Game Pass. They're not killing it on the cloud, right? Even though they just reported that now they have double digit participation percentage wise um, on the cloud. This is far, even though they have these bumps here and there, this is a far, a far separation from the push towards 100 million users, users per those endpoints that they talked about uh, via the court documents that were released. They're far from that. And that's why they're making this pivotal change. I'm not bringing all this up to throw dirt on Xbox. I'm helping you understand, as I've tried the last few years, why this is going to end in a different place that you expect. They're now going in a different direction. They're now looking at, well, damn, when we, when we crunch the numbers and we look at all of the potential users on these other consoles, that could double our endpoint ratio right off the bat if these guys start buying our games on these other platforms. I get there's so many Steam users. I get that there's so many PC users in general, but everybody doesn't have the rig, for instance, to play Halo, to play Gears, to play Starfield. And now Xbox Game Studios, they're chock full of those games. Diablo, Call of Duty. If you look at the 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 hardware survey that steam releases every year or that's out there now to the public that you could see real time only about five percent of the steam rigs that are out there can play those games that i just named and again xbox game studios along with abk and bethesda are chock full of those type of games but guess what the console uh comparison to to said games they can be played on the playstation 5 and guess what because of the saturation of the switch they'll more likely be able to um take the time to make a port for those and again that could double their endpoint access right off the bat if those games are successful there xbox no longer has an incentive to be exclusive they have the the least selling console out there they're actually doing worse than last generation in that regards. And again, as far as having an ecosystem with exclusive content and driving people specifically to that ecosystem, that game plan has not worked. But they got all these games that are doing gangbusters on all these other platforms. So why not make that your strategy in unison? Still have an ecosystem for those that want to engage with Game Pass because unfortunately, the other consoles don't want Game Pass on their platforms at this moment. At least exclusively, you'll get that. But outside of that, you'll be able to see these games elsewhere. It makes complete business sense based upon the fact that Microsoft wants to retain the executives that they have there. They want to have Phil Spencer there. They want to have Matt Booty there. These, again, I'm not trying to be mean, just letting you know who can do what. 
these are the people that are there and they have shown us over the last few years or almost a decade over they do not have an eye for the triple a talent or the triple a quality that is needed to, to to compete in that fashion i mean as we're recording this freaking final fantasy seven rebirth is scoring a 93 hell divers and server boards are crashing grand blue fantasy even though that's maybe a timed exclusive or uh just a console exclusive that's being regarded well that's playing well on steam and, and other places i mean place and then that's not even it we got rise of ronin and uh stellar blade i mean playstation is dropping some bangers that is getting critical acclaim across the board and we still got spider-man dlc that's coming right and and new game plus the portal selling well playstation vr 2s has been announced they're going to carry that over to pc if you're going to have a closed ecosystem as people want you gotta have a team that has a keen eye for the type of quality that is needed to drive that initiative. And I'm sorry, Phil Spencer, Matt Booty and company are not the duo. But they are big on diversifying where they're at. They're good in motivating their, their user base in certain regards, even when it's honestly at times not in their best gaming interests. There are things that they are good at, and now, and Sachi is comfortable with them. So now they're going to cater the business line to what they have and what these execs can do. It is what it is. We tried to warn you about it for those that may have other gaming needs opposed to where this this ship was going you didn't want to listen in some cases but it's now clear so you just got a decision to make really think about it are you okay with the new xbox and if not where are you going it's as simple as that you're a consumer you're not an investor an investor puts money into something in the hopes that something goes comes to fruition right like that's the driver i'm hoping that something will happen that's and, and, and that's a that's a uh what do you call a, a bearish investor we're hoping in the long term that you'll be able to produce this but a consumer consumes mainly off of what is being presented now yes are they hopeful that updates and things will will in increase the the, the value nature of, of the thing that they're buying of course but nobody goes and buys a car in the hopes that eventually the wheels will come. Like if the wheels ain't already there, then guess what? You're not buying that car. So from a consumer level, maybe people should have listened, but you didn't, but, but, but now we're here. So you just got to make that decision. When it comes to the fanboys, I get that you were on Twitter. I get that you were talking in narratives that just didn't pan out. Here's my suggestion to you, and, and, and we'll leave on this note. If you're even listening to this, chances are that you are a hardcore gamer or that you have a lot of knowledge of the gaming culture, right? Like the average casual, they're never going to they're never going to know who I am let alone come across this video if you care about the culture that much or have that type of exposure to games you have to be a gamer with the capital G I want to tell you guys a personal story again as I said earlier in this video I am a cloud gamer I enjoy cloud gaming it's my number one way to game and for those of you that don't know I was a staunch supporter of Stadia all right, hear me out. Because post-mortem, everybody wants to sit there and talk like Stadia was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh man, it's a shame. 
Linus Tech Tips. The developer said it was a fantastic experience. Y'all want to see all this great stuff post-mortem, but while it was alive, you wanted to make up stuff, lie about the capabilities, it can't do this, and too much lag, and all this other crazy stuff. But the post-mortem stuff is correct. Stadia was a great platform. It just was in the hands of the wrong business execs who didn't know how to make the right decisions. And I'm not t I'm talking about people above um the homie Jack Buser's pay grade. Jack, I, I feel like a Jack Buser um, and even Phil Harrison, quiet Phil Harrison, I think at their pay grades, they knew what they wanted to do. They knew what was needed. We, we, we saw in the court documents that were released that Phil Harrison, there was an email released that Phil Harrison wanted to invest in the Fortnite. Had Fortnite been an original uh, title for Stadia, they could have done a lot better, but that's here nor there. I think those guys got it, but they realized that the people that they reported to didn't. Phil Harrison's not even at Google anymore, it's reported, and Jack Buser got out of Stadia. He, he saw what was happening um, and, and stared them in a different direction because he knew they weren't serious as far as I'm concerned. Um, that being said, when I was advocating for Stadia, some of my fellow Stadia gamers were mad at me because I always and also simultaneously advocated for the PlayStation 5. Now, when you look at what the PlayStation 5 offered day one, as far as innovation versus the trajectory that Stadia was on, there was even a Forbes article that said, you know what, this Stadia thing is starting to look like it's more next gen than these next gen consoles. They were light kind of day one as far as what they were offering and stadia was doing this thing had stream connect no friction all this stuff right it, it's just you know after sg and &E closed and they had to reboot what they were doing things kind of you know fell off for a bit and then you know the rest is history that being said cloud gamers were falling on that hype from that forbes article and so forth and said mm why are you buying a playstation 5 why are you buying a console at all D you don't need a console and i said look I'm an advocate for cloud gaming. Still am to this day. I'm co-owner, co-creator of Cloud Dosage, one of the, 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 the best and, and prominent um, cloud sites out there, right? Go check it out, clouddosage.com. Um, but I'm a gamer with a capital G more than anything. I love games. I love gaming. I've been gaming for over 35 plus years. Yes, I'm an old fogey. I've been gaming longer than some of you that are listening to this have been on this planet. I go where the games are at. So even though I have a preference, even though I wanna see technology push forward to make gaming better, and that's what cloud gaming will do when it's utilized properly, um, I go where the games are at. And PlayStation is known for making some great games. I can see what's coming down the pike. I've been talking to developers who are excited about what's coming down the pike. I don't wanna miss out. And I, and I have. I mean, even though I game primarily, for the most part, on the cloud, PlayStation has taken over my 2024. It's like been a, a complete role reversal where it's like 90-10 on the cloud. Normally, it, it's, it's, it's been re reversed because of all the stellar stuff that's coming from PlayStation. I am so glad that I got my PlayStation when I got it. And I'm going to get a PlayStation 5 Pro when it comes out, even though I game primarily on the cloud. And that's my message to you. Don't wave no flag. Don't follow no content creator who has an agenda to get you to click on their stuff for ad revenue and send them super chats. Do what you need to do as a gamer. Follow the games, not the brand. You gotta serve yourself as a customer because you're not an investor, all right? And for those that are mad because you can't argue on Twitter anymore, Again, as a content creator, follow the games, not the brand. Even though I may advocate this, Stadia, GFN, Xbox, PlayStation, it's all because of who is giving me the best gaming experience. It's always centered around that. So if you go in a different direction from what I'm looking for, it's nothing for me to say, you know what? We had a hell of a run together, but I'm going somewhere else. Until you learn to do the same content creator and consumer, you will be stuck like Chuck. When Stadia died, what did I do? People were shocked. I went live, talked about the reasons and talked about what I was gonna do as a gamer and didn't skip a beat. Gave my salutations and, and, and you know, my eulogies. 
did my prognosis of what happened and why. And I moved on because I'm a gamer with a capital G. Just like I see then, I see now some of you are depressed. You don't know what to do because you don't follow the games. You follow a brand. If you are a gamer with a capital G, if you want to be embedded with this community, you have to stop that. There's nothing wrong with you advocating platforms, but you advocate the platforms because they're giving you what you need as a gamer. The prospects are great. They're going in the direction that you want for gaming. Not because, oh, I bought this thing, so now I must support it no matter what. No. These are multi-billion dollar companies. A lot of you are doing what I do. You got to steal your wife's credit card. <laughs> Take money out of the cookie jar. That's the, for the car gas. You're, doing, you're scraping pennies to support a platform or a brand that is not servicing you. That is idiotic. And that, and that goes beyond Xbox gamer, place it with who, whatever type of gamer that you are. Be a gamer with a capital G. Stop flag waving. Your shoulders are not big enough to carry the load for multi-trillion dollar companies. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about this rant and all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links to follow me. Those links will lead you to Cloud Dosage, Art Knock Digital Culture, and Yes Geeks. Until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.